New Labour has trashed this country for 10 years. Debt-based capitalism based on quick returns, based on mortgages that should never have been sold, based on a 24-7 economy fueled by debt and mass immigration. And what's happened to the British people and the English people during this period? Three million mobile people have emigrated and have left the kingdom. They've gone. They've gone to North America. They've gone to Australasia. They wanted out of what this country has become. Two million whites have left London, our capital city. One article in the rag in London, the Evening Standard, said that race and the extraordinary demographic changes in parts of London, in and out, may have had something to do with that exodus. It was the primary reason for that exodus. If you want total crime, anarchy and disorder in the cities, both New Labour and Cameron will be no different. It's a light blue tie and a little bit of spin and a bit more private sector involvement here and there. But the core of these parties is the same. And utterly the same. You watch them on a Wednesday in the House of Commons when they're all screaming abuse at each other. At Prime Minister's question time, it's synthetic abuse. They agree on 80%. They agree on multiracialism. They agree on multiculturalism. They agree, agree on the disprivileging of the cultural right to domination of the white majority. They agree on all the social changes that have occurred since the 1960s. They agree on the collapse of the family for which many of their policies are responsible, moral, social, economic and ideological. They agree with what's happened to our educational system. Our educational system shot to pieces. And why do we know it's shot to pieces? Because new Labour ministers will not send their own children to the schools that they expect others to go to. The thing that strikes me when you come to Liverpool is the extraordinary nature of the buildings. These classical buildings and the power that they once represented. It's a, it's a, it's a, it opens one's eyes. If you look at these buildings, these were the buildings that ruled the world. The manifested power and glory for our kind of people. What British politician today talks about British power and British glory? They're ashamed to be British. They're ashamed to be English. They're ashamed to be white. They're ashamed to be Caucasian. They're ashamed to be civilizationally European in a British context. They're ashamed of our past. They're ashamed of the statues in the squares in this and other cities, the names of whose, uh, the names of the individuals celebrated there. They can't remember or don't wish to if they can. They're ashamed. Ashamed of these flags up here and behind me. Well, we're not ashamed. We're proud of what we are. <laughs> New Labour say that we're intolerant and that we want the absence of peace. These are the ones who put the troops into Iraq and into Afghanistan. Blair's had about seven wars in his ten <coughs> years in power. Brown financed them. This war has done nothing for us at all. Nothing for us at all. And we don't control the streets in our own cities. And liberals say that we're the intolerant ones, that we are the warmongers, that we represent the past, that we represent the national wars of the past. They're fighting wars all over the world to impose their sort of ideology on all peoples, including our own. If you listen to Brown closely, what's his message? The message is that the whole world should be like the West. But what happens to Western people if everyone else is Westernized? The West is ours. It's our culture. It's our civilization. It's not for universal export, nor is it for the whole world to come here and to enjoy what we have and have built and have sustained and have fought and struggled for. Life is not a bowl of cherries. And liberal views about life are false. Men and women are not interchangeable. Marriage is not an optional extra if you wish to bring up children. Men should not be permitted to marry and bring up children as normalcy. A society that throws its own values and its own past in the road will have no future. You have to base things on glory and upon patriotism. The only socialism or the only social feeling that's left is patriotism. Patriotism is the remaining socialism. It brings everyone together. It admits inequality. It admits identity. If the left a hundred years ago when the Labour Party was being formed in cities like this had not rejected the idea of religion, had not rejected the idea of race, had not rejected the idea of ethnicity, had not rejected the idea of identity, 
They would have been the current that was unstoppable in the world. But they rejected all of these things that make life tolerable for people. One of their cardinal mistakes was the rejection of the idea of the family, nuclear and extended. Without a family, many people are bereft and have nothing. When everything falls apart, particularly economically, which is coming for many at this hour, the family is what you go back to. Outside a certain circle of warmth in relation to those who are related to you by blood, life for many can be as hard as the pavement out there. This shows you the extraordinarily destructive nature of left-wing ideas, which have been prevalent for much of the last century. But the irony is, those ideas in a moderated, in a softer, in a more middle-class way, are in power. Those ideas are in power. We have a left-wing capitalist society. Something which most people thought would be impossible. hundred years ago, you'd have been accused of being a political illiterate for saying that. But that's what we've got. The values of the left, the values of miscegenation, the values of multiculturalism, the values of multi-faith, multi-cult identity, the values of a supermarket for ideas, the values of internationalism or any nationality but our own, the values of complete moral equality for all forms of life. These are norms. These are norms. They all believe in multiculturalism. They are all tolerant of every faith except those that sustain this society originally. They preach equality, but they have reneged on their commitment to the core people up here in the Northwest and elsewhere. When people voted Labour in 1945 to have a change from the world of the 1930s, they didn't vote for what this country now is in 2008. They didn't vote for what they see flickering behind them on any news screen. They didn't vote for the torturing of babies to death in uh, sink states in inner London boroughs. They didn't vote for the prevalence of crime. Europe's just another tier of government that is removed from our people and which they essentially despise. One of the most remarkable things is that there's now a majority, a majority to leave the European Union. And why do we want to leave the European Union? Because we dislike French and German people? No, that's got nothing to do with it. Because we want to have sovereignty of our own nation state. So we can decide who is British and who is not. But so we can decide on our own economic affairs. So we can decide on our own military and cultural policies. The nation state's big enough for people to identify with. And small enough to make a difference. People don't identify with great big bureaucracies all over the world. They identify with their own country. Because if you're not rooted in something, you have no past. And if you have no present by virtue of that understanding, you have no future. We have to toughen up as a people. We have to become more virile. We have to become stronger in the way that we once were. Many people secretly look to the people in this party as an insurance policy for what they fear might be coming. What do you think this society is going to be like in 50 years on present trends? Labour has passed these laws particularly to deny white working class people the right to free speech in their own society. These laws are the nets that are designed to trap people so they can't speak in the way that they feel comfortable. That is what they're designed to do. It's designed so that only liberal people, for which they believe educated people, can speak. No one else can say anything. And if they do, they're sort of branded on the tongue immediately as one of those bigots, one of those outsiders, one of those intolerant people who advocate uh, exclusivity rather than inclusivity. Tony Blair said that our people fought in wars for reasons of tolerance and inclusion. That is a lie. When they went over the top in 1914, when they fired from a bunker in the desert in North Africa in the early 1940s, they weren't saying, get that howitzer out of my sight for tolerance and inclusion. They were fighting for this country and for their regiment and for their mates and for where they came from. That's what they were fighting for. They weren't fighting for tolerance and inclusion. There's no such thing. If you're too tolerant, you're on the ground with nettles growing over your body. You walk upright in the sun if you've got any dignity at all. Life is intolerant. Life is unequal. Life is unfair. We've got to make sure that we are the winners in this life and we can begin to clean up the mess that the elite has made for the last 60 years. Tory, Liberal and Labour. Liberals don't need to rule because their ideas are in power and the other parties switch about. We are illiberal. We are Democrats, but we are not liberals. We want crime to be punished. 
We want social justice for our own people. We want jobs for our own people. We want identity for our own people. We want racial crimes against our own people to stop. We want our own country back. We want our own country back. 70 million, that's right, 70 million persons of colour have entered the United States of America since the all-white immigration policy was done away with by Robert Kennedy in the late 1960s. That is why Obama was elected. White Americans face minority status, minority status, in New York City, in New York State, in California, in Texas. Not in just a car, uh, in two or three years, but in maybe five or six. In New York, they're in a minority now. In Texas, it's 50-50. Parts of California, you have to do complicated sums about how many Latinos are Caucasian and so on. Now, liberal-minded people would say, what's he talking about? We're all the same? We're all the same, and these divisions don't really matter. No other country on Earth, no other groups of countries on Earth, no other regime, not China, not India, not Japan, not the new Russia, and so on, has invited the world to come in has thrown their nationality away, has opened the door and said, come in and make what you can with what we've got here. No other group on earth has done it. In Japan, immigration has to be racially based and has to be congruent with those who are Asiatic, namely Japanese. In India, you have to have an Indian parent. You have to share Indian culture of one sort or another. To even have a business, you need an Indian partner. These groups are protecting their identity. They aren't throwing it away on the basis of liberal ideas and globalist economics which are failing. Liberals preach a lot about tolerance and inclusion and how civilised they are and how sensitive they are and how aware they are of the rights of the other. But in actual fact, they've lost the plot in relation to what their own people want. Our own people wish to be free and proud and dignified in their own land. We wish to stand up for what we are inside our own culture. We wish to be a powerful country, even in modernity, if it's a country of the second rank of pure power. We want to decide our own future. We want to decide who is British and who is not. We want to decide who is English and who is not. Well, we want to decide what our history is and what it means and what it does not. We want English History Month. Not Black History Month. We want our glory to be manifested again. Liberals, if a, if a member of the uh, Liberal Democrat executive was sat over there in imagination, he'd be saying, it's the past, it's extremism. Well, what has moderation done for us in the last 50 to 60 years? Always cutting the difference, always listening to the other person's point of view, always bending over backwards, always moving back in order not to be too authoritarian or to be seen to be. This is the politics of funk and denial. In the end, if you adopt that to the degree that we almost have done, we will disappear. We will disappear. We have an establishment that's too weak to stand up for our people. That doesn't ideologically believe in doing so anyway. There's not one member of the new Labour cabinet that would say they would be proud to be English and British in too aggressive a way. And that's because these people are increasingly are unpatriotic. They're failures. They're mild and effervescent traitors. And they need to be removed. They need to be electorally removed en masse. They need to be removed in the European elections. Their lower tier representatives at council and district level need to be removed. Their Welsh parliamentary and Scottish devolved parliamentary cousins need to be removed. And finally, the Westminster tier, the most difficult tier of all, the tier which you can only democratically attack by going above to the European Union dispensation and below to the West Fair and below to the Council one, like the GLA victory with Richard Barbrook in London recently, when you chisel up from above and below. Because we have to have a future in our own land. And our future is not as a minority, not as a despised culture that's one side of the curriculum, not dead white European males like Shakespeare who get five minutes every so often. We wish to be central. We wish to be dominant. We wish to be primordial in our own country, in our own land, using our own language, and in relation to our own traditions, military and otherwise. Many people in this room will have voted Labour in the past, will have been involved in other forms of politics or no forms of politics. 
We need to bring together people from military backgrounds, from civilian backgrounds, from northern backgrounds, from southern backgrounds, from working class backgrounds, from middle class backgrounds, from upper class backgrounds, from Scottish backgrounds, from Welsh backgrounds, from Irish backgrounds. We need to bring them all together. And this flag can bring them together. We believe in individual freedom and responsibility within community. You can't be an individual without a group. They're not antithetical. We believe in free speech. It's a British right, it's an English right, I hear you say. There's very little free speech in this country at the moment. Law after law has been passed to prevent us from speaking, as we would wish. We've become afraid to open our mouths in our own country. This is our country, we can say what we want.